talk at Hunters Australia. I'm in a strange world today, a mixing of herb rich ground covers and dry rainforest species. We're on the lookout for Sarcochylus. There's a few other bits and pieces I've heard are hanging around here. It's a nice humid day, late spring. We should have some luck on our side. Something I noticed about this area is that it's incredibly productive. It's just so diverse and there's so much going on. There's a lot of fruit bearing species as well. I think there's a resident pig that doesn't uh, appreciate the extra company. So we might have to tread carefully from here. Now we're starting to have a bit of luck seeing a few juveniles hanging on. So what is this? This is a Caprosma quadrifida, one of those fruit bearing trees that's good for jam. You can see a juvenile here, juvenile there, one here and another one up there. So there's some good recruitment going on in this area. Starting to get a bit larger. Might see some flowers coming in soon. Have a look at this guy. Looks like he's seen a few years. He's growing off a of Pomoderis, which is a little bit different. So far, I've been noticing a few on Caprosmas and also the Muttonwoods. And now this is why we come out here. Beautiful little orchid beautiful day in a beautiful environment. Let's have a closer look at some of these key species here that support the Sarcochylus. The first one is Caprosma, and these are some large examples. This species is widespread, but here they particularly grow well. The next is muttonwood, or Rapunia howardiana. This is a beautiful tree with glossy dark green leaves, and when in fruit, the branches are covered in these purple berries. This species is quite interesting. In most of Victoria, it's considered a weed and is controlled. The development of various housing estates and fragmentation of land due to farming has meant the sweet potosporum or potosporum undulatum has gotten the upper hand in certain areas where it wouldn't have previously. Fire can often keep it in check, but again, we've altered that regime. So it gets the upper hand. But in these gullies down here, it's a key species that supports this ecological vegetation class. I think this species adds to the strangeness of this world. The fact that outside this gully, this plant causes significant problems in reducing biodiversity, but here it contributes and supports it. This might just look like another gully, but it's not. It's a perfect microclimate for this vegetation and the Sarcochylus to thrive. The altitude that it sits at, the direction that it runs in, is perfect for creating humidity, airflow, and the temperature that these plants need to exist. This microclimate is a little pocket of remnant rainforest that exists from the time when Australia was covered in it, millions of years ago. Now, Sarcochylus australis, or the butterfly orchid, has pendulous racemes, which means its flowers hang below it on like a delicate string. Its fleshy petals and sepals have green to brown variation and the labellum white with pink stripes. In areas that support its growth, it can be quite common, but these areas that support its growth can be hard to find. It ranges from New South Wales through Victoria and into Tasmania. Sarcochylus has the ability to support ecotourism, a strong following of growers that can easily access populations dense with plants and flowers. The environment is always epic and traveling from New South Wales to Tasmania, observing across different vegetation types would be a great holiday in my book. It's one of only a couple real epiphytes in Victoria, so a true treat for orchid enthusiasts. Something worth considering is that Sarcochylus are easily attainable. Growers have them all over the place. They're readily available for purchase. So whilst we can see them on the track side here, there's no need to poach them, which is one of the major threats to them. Now, Sarcochylus have a tough life. Not only are they an epiphyte and subject to everything that goes along with living on a host plant, but their preferred environment is also quite restricted to these damp gullies that you can see behind me. Now, some of the ones we've seen today have been hanging on with only a few roots, 
and they've still gone into full flower. So that tells me that this environment is quite productive. Climate change could be a threat. Warmer weather drying out these gullies, making recruitment harder. Now we were having a look in the strange gullies before, and as per usual, it dries out on top of the, the hills around it. So I thought we'd come up and have a look around here. And already a few hundred meters into the trip, we're seeing some great things like sun orchids and duck orchids, as well as some crazy lizards. What a treat this is, a large lace monitor that is obviously King Dingaling in these neck of the woods. He's not phased at all. And a perfect complement to the ancient rainforest doesn't he look like a dinosaur? Powerful muscles and solid head. No doubt small mammals and birds have their lives based around this guy. Have a look at those claws. Perfect for climbing trees and scratching around. These guys can defend themselves. They can run on their two hind feet with their mouth open and you do not want to get bitten. Torn to shreds and infected with bacteria. The lace monitor is the only species of monitor that inhabits these cool temperate forests of Victoria. Duck orchids seem to be having a particularly fruitful year. There's hundreds of leaves in front of me. Not all of them have gone into uh, flower, and some of them are quite juvenile and dry looking, but nonetheless, this is a healthy colony. Now have a look at these guys, chocolate fringe lilies. Stay focused. Orchids. Have you ever been intimidated by an orchid? It happens. Now I reckon I've come past these in the wild before, but never seen them. Tiny little elbow orchids. They don't look like much, but once you get to know them, they're pretty cool. What I realize about the elbow orchid is it could have also been called the fly fisherman orchid. It's basically an attractive female wasp on a fishing rod. The male wasp is lured in with the chance to mate, and as it does so, it pollinates the orchid. This is rather deceptive and disheartening, as the wasp gets no nectar, pollen, or satisfaction. It leaves empty-handed without a phone number. Like many other orchids, the elbow orchid is technically upside down, and when we flip it around, we can see the labellum being a highly modified fishing rod. Now I have to say, that pig did get my heart racing a little bit but I was even more surprised to find out that it was actually an arboreal pig, or a koala. Now I reckon we can put today down as a bit of a win. I've seen some new genuses, we've been in some funky environments, and seen some crazy animals as well. So this is a pretty good way to finish off spring down here in Eastern Victoria. Thanks for watching.